Sometimes love can hurt. We know Puka Nakua has got plenty of love and energy. We are live in Studio B with your day-to-day -day BYU Sports play-by-play -play. alongside Jerem Jordan. I am Spencer Linton. And yesterday, speaking of Mr. Nakua, I had the chance to speak with him one-on-one -on, -one on how to fix this BYU football losing trend. It's complicated, but he's ready for the challenge as one of the team leaders one-on-one -on -one with Puka Nakua. Puka, we have heard from several people that you gave an impassioned speech following BYU's loss in Lynchburg at Liberty, and it woke the locker room up. If you can, take us inside that meeting and the feelings that you had in that moment and, and your message to your team. Um, feelings of, of my, the most intense love I have. I, I, my brothers have felt that love for me. It's a, f a feeling of... An, I, I feel the pain. Uh, nobody ever wants to lose, but um, I also feel the, the pain and love of accountability, I guess, in the sense of everybody from our from the, uh, the top of our staff all the way down to the guys making sure that our, our ankles are taped right. Um, everybody needed to, uh, to look in the mirror and make sure that uh, what you were doing is what you were supposed to do. We, we're given out there as a football team. We go out there with 11 guys on offense and defense, and each guy has their own task. And um, there's nothing more we can ask of you to, other than to do your one the, to do your 111. This in the football term, that's how it comes down is to do your 111. So you're asked to do your one assignment, and that's all we can cut. You do more, and it's a huge blessing. We, there's nothing more exciting than seeing you get your job done and then make the play or something like that. But to make sure that you look in the mirror and you got to be accountable for what you put on tape. The eye of the sky never lies. That's that's always something that my brothers have told me and it's something that you learn um, pretty quickly as you get in here to college is, and the amount of film that other teams watch and the amount of film that you have to watch is um, you think somebody might not see it, but the eye in the sky always gets it. So you always, you got to be accountable for what you put on tape and just a, a simple reality check of, I, I, I needed to hold everybody accountable and guys hold me accountable. There are plays out there I miss. I think of the the post ball that I missed from Jaren. I had a screen uh, on third and 10 where I, I had the opportunity to get a first down and I didn't get it. We had to punt the ball away. So accountability in all aspects of making sure that it's not only football stuff, but when it comes through the week, uh, everything everything plays a part. We traveled early last week. Uh, not <laughs> travel, but making sure you take care of your body before we get there on Saturday. And all the little things add up of accountability, not just when – uh, coaches up there on the whiteboard or giving you a plus or a minus on, on the play that you're in. Um, we're, we're making sure we get to the lift on time. You're taking care of your body, the extra treatment, all the little things that it adds up. We're, we're in the later part of the season and um, you got to be accountable for what you do. Uh, it's hard as I was talking to one of the freshmen and they're young kids and you just come out of high school and you're, you're an elite uh, player on your team. And then you step onto a team full of elite guys and it can kind of fluster you a little bit, but, the, the consistency and your accountability to yourself is uh, will allow you to succeed because uh, you do the things that you know you're capable of doing consistently. Uh, when things get hard and other people might be tired, the habit that you've built is is what's going to get us strong. So making sure that everybody's everybody's habits and the things that they're they're doing out there on the football field are being checked, and that you're aware of the good things that you're doing and the bad things that you're doing because uh, we're doing a lot of good things, but there are some bad things that we got to change. So. Clearly, accountability is uh, is a big part of how you want to show love and and how you want to hold guys to a higher standard. So, how do you walk that fine line of not being too intense and making guys feel down, but you know, still calling them out adequately and and doing so with love? Because uh, I know that's a that's a tricky balance. So, how do you do that? Um, yeah, just like you said, it is a tricky balance. And luckily, uh, growing up with brothers, I feel like made it either uh, made it easier. I've been playing football a long time, and obviously the situation changed and the environment changed. But um, my the the love is my love is greater than uh, my love for my teammates is greater than any other thing that um, could happen out there. I, there's nothing more than I, on third down when I want I want to see. Um, Max Tooley, Keenan Peely, like all, all, all 11 guys end up on the running back and we have a TFL and then our punt unit goes out there. But uh, it might not always, love Love has many different ways of showing how it comes out and it may be intense. I, I, I want to get up close into your face and that whenever some somebody mentions that, especially here at, uh, at BYU when our culture is love and learn, I always think of the, <laughs> it's funny, it, the, the, the talk by Thomas or uh, Jeff, 
uh, somebody where he's like, I'm going to get up close in your face. I want you to feel the heatness of my breath and something like that. And that's that intensity. It's, it's my most intense love for you because I want you to succeed. I know what everybody in there in that locker room is capable of. So my love is from the, the best place it could come without me trying to punch you in the face. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like how that said yeah uh it's a, and it's a unique type of love for sure not everybody likes to have that type of tough love but sometimes that's what has to happen for for a team to progress now i've had a couple of your teammates talk to me about how byu kind of lost their swagger and mojo after the oregon game and, and it was kind of like confidence was broken and maybe byu hasn't been the same team since that uh performance against the ducks how do you rectify that? How do you get back to a place where you are confident again? Um, I think kind of some of the stuff that I mentioned before, consistency, that's where it comes from. Of um, That's something that we haven't been able to put together of consistently scoring on offense, consistently passing the ball well, consistently blocking the well, um, consistently running the ball well. And obviously the other side of the ball has had their own struggles, but making sure that we are consistent because that's that's how you ha you earn the you earn the right to be confident through your consistency of on Monday I I did this and this I on Tuesday I watched this film and made sure I was prepared for this look so when that opportunity arises on Saturday you never know we go over so many various looks and uh, we see all the tape and we see what they put on they obviously watch us but you never know what you're gonna get out there on Saturday until you get out there so the consistency of work that you put in through the week and um, it doesn't really, it started early. It started before September 3rd was our first game. And it's crazy. We're, we're, we're a ways away from that now. And the consistency that you did um, in your winter workouts, through your summer workouts, these are the, those are the times that when, when we're here now, we're in the grind. We just lost three games of um, what were the habits, uh, what were the habits that you've been able to hold throughout the season to carry you into these, these tough moments where I can feel confident um, because I know I've put in the work. What is BYU playing for at this point on the heels of a three-game losing streak with a pretty good ECU team coming to Provo on Friday? Uh, we're play we're playing for Friday, just 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 as you said it. Uh, it's it, uh, so trying to be so laser focused into what we got. We only get so many games. We get uh, at the beginning of the season, we we get twelve games, and you look at those, and they're sad. The Saturdays, the Fridays that we get to play, uh, you you only get so many of them. So you got to take advantage of every opportunity. And we're locked in on ECU right now. Uh, another t uh, another team getting a chance to come down here to Provo. So. Um, we're going to have to earn the respect and we're going to have to continue to do the things that we've been doing right and then continue to minimize our mistakes. You are a guy that has a natural leader inside of you, a fire. How do you stoke that fire in some other guys that maybe are not inclined to be that way? Because it just feels like the locker room needs not just you, but multiple leaders. So how do you lead that front and stoke the fire? Um. I wish I knew what stoked the fire, man. <laughs> <laughs> Light it but, up. Uh, Throw yeah. the match in there. <laughs> All right. Then I guess I got to be carrying the gasoline and just continue to make sure that my fire is burning. I love this game, and I love every single one of those guys. I love our entire staff. Um, I'm grateful to be in this position that I am right now playing football. I, I'm, I'm healthy. I'm in one piece. Uh, I have the opportunity to come play in front of 60,000 fans on Friday night here in the Valadero Stadium and in Provo, Utah, in the place that I've grown up. So, um my fire is always burning and hopefully when guys see the fire, they can, they can follow the, it does. You don't have to, you don't have to always have your own fire. You can follow the fire. The, we, we are the light that there are captains on this team. There are people that have been put in the, the positions that they're in to lead, to lead this, uh, the football team. And I believe in coach Kalani. I believe in Jaron Hall. We have the right guys to get the job done. So you just got to follow the light for sure. Is it as simple as winning a game to reestablish the confidence and mojo? Does it cut? Is it, is it that simple? I believe so. It's the best feeling when you walk in uh, into the locker room, uh, whether you're in a way or home and coach Kalani is kind of trying to hit his gritty. Everybody's dead dancing and circling up. So, and everybody has a smile on their face. That's, that's love and learn at its best. And uh, we need to get back to that. And that's our plan on Friday. How much do you know about ECU at this point and what they're going to try and do to slow the BYU offense down? Um. I wish I, I wish I could tell you all, all I know is that we're planning on doing a lot of things on the BYU offense to continue to ramp it up. So there, there is no chance of slowing us down. <laughs> ah, okay. Okay. Can you give us a hint of anything, Puka? I, I mean, <laughs> is this been BYU throwing it over the top 10 times? Uh, I, I wish I know I got, I got maybe five, five or six. We got, uh, Jaron, Chris, Peeney, Miles, uh, 
Chase, Cody, Kibo, Koss, uh, Isaac, Mason, Ethan Erickson. Uh, we got we got a bunch of dudes up there on the offense, and everybody's excited and ready to make plays. And you'll see you'll see a lot of those guys out there on Friday. That's for sure. Well, I will say this: the wide receiver room, even amidst the three game losing streak and frustrations and struggles. The wide receiver room has been very, very consistent, and uh, a lot of different guys have stepped up. What's been the key to the BYU wide receivers performing at such a consistent high level, regardless of opponent? Um, I think there's a there's a confidence in our room that I think uh, Coach Coach Fest brings that to our room, and then obviously um, with Jared, uh, the trust that he has in us, and then just uh, each guy we go out there, we play against our defense, and we practice hard. We we want it to be the the worst possible situation during practice. So when we get out there in the game, a uh, second and a second and thirteen doesn't seem too bad when we're practicing on second and thirteen, and there may be thirteen guys out there on defense. So we're we're back. We're practicing a backed up um, situation of we're we're uh, we're 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 behind the sticks on first and second down, and we're we know we're looking at a third and long. So um, all those guys, they're they're extremely uh, happy to make those plays. There, there's never a time where we look at the sticks and it's all third and thirty. Where oh dang, we can't make a play. Uh, every time we step out there, especially if we're gonna drop back and uh, Jaren's gonna pass that rock, every single one of those guys, and I know in our receiver room are ready to make that play. Whether it's in a bubble game, a jet sweep, uh, a run block, or uh, we're throwing fifty yard bombs over the top of the defense, uh, we're ready for all of it. Coco, we'll finish with this. And I kind of feel strange asking this because it comes after such a frustrating ordeal in Lynchburg. But in any way, was what you experienced over the weekend with your team a good thing and beneficial? If so, how? Um, I wouldn't say... No, I, I wouldn't say it's beneficial. Obviously, uh, our, our objective to go out there every week is to win the game, and that was that's we failed. We failed with our objective. Um, so, I wouldn't say there there was a good that came out of it. We're gonna get better, but there uh, there was no good part of this weekend. Uh, we we our plan is to win football games, and we didn't do that. Yeah, fair to say the pain is driving you to be better. Agreed. <laughs> All right, Puka, we appreciate the time, my friend. Uh, let's give you some BYU Sports Nation karma. You can share it with your buddies. Send it through the locker room. Yes, under sir. Appreciate the lights of Edward Stadium. It's been a special thing for you guys to play at night, so uh, we're looking forward to that. Yes, sir. Always and go Cougs, baby.